not good. What's not good? Drop this. Oh. And there's a washer. It's supposed to be on it, and the washer's not there anymore. Like it fell in the bucket, or what's never there? It's in the bucket. Oh. <laughs> These things are super fragile. Little cheap plastic containing screws. Oh, sh I can't get under there. It creeps too high. That's the wrong panel. Oh. Yeah. There you go. That's about it. These are crush washers. So you use them once and you can reuse them, but to be on the safe side, you don't want to use them more than once. So now that it's stopped, there's still going to be a lot of fluid here on this end. This is we're taking this off. Let's look at the difference between an old crush washer and a new crush washer. Can. There's a bolt in there that I can't get to. And this guy is holding on to here. That's rested on. Getting here with some heat. I put this aluminum sheet in here. Got the map gas here. After I heat the bolt, spray it down. Trying to boil out the, the rust. Tighten some. And then loosen. And you tighten. So it's spinning. And then loosen. Is that tight? The way the stem is right here, a socket doesn't get in between here and here. That's why I got these go throughs wrench set. They have a hole in the middle. So hopefully. Yeah. This one I had a hard time with. Also, it's an exhaust bolt. Nice. Oh, now it's turning. Ah! Just when you thought it's gonna work. See Lucy. So this is Lucy. Why isn't it pissing? I bet you it is Lucy. I just can't see it. Oh god damn it! It's not even on good. So with three hands, map gas, that aluminum shield, water, got it out, and uh, it's not too stripped. It's a little stripped. Ah, uh, not too stripped. I think it's good enough that I'm gonna put some of my rust remover on there and soak it real good. See that? That was easy. This actually holds these two pieces of the exhaust together. And I, you can get an exhaust leak and that'll cause this uh, O2 sensor right here to throw a fault. Now I can get to these bolts. It's pretty much only just this one bolt here. Oh shoot, this whole thing came out. I didn't want this to come out. These little stubby things are aluminum. Uh, this is not easy. Look at this. I can't even get in there. There's like no good angle. Dude, hey, budge. Yeah, I don't feel good about that at all. That is beyond tight. Like, insanely tight. The next part is me towing this to uh, Lexus. <laughs> and like, hey, don't do this. Can you see here? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna try to do like push and then pry. So push, pry, push, pry. <laughs> and then, uh, I see it moving. Do you see it moving? There we go. Let this pop right out of the hole. I see it coming off. I didn't even see it coming off. Hoping I didn't scratch this up, and there's not a single scratch. There's still putty in here. Oh yeah, you're right. Transmission fluid doesn't taste like anything. See this here? I was afraid I was gonna scrape that up, but it looks pretty good. Wait a minute. Are they all over here? Maybe it's A, B, and C. This is the front of the car, and this is the back of the car. 
and the solenoids are going to be over here and we're looking at opposite sides one two three four this is the one i'm going after shift solenoid valve three which on the scanner this reads a this is b this is c this is d so it looks like it's this one here right is that it yep And there's a second one, it's not coming out. What the heck was that? Is that a spark? Oh, I thought it could be. No, that was like the picture one. It was a tiny one. This is the... Okay. Yep. This Still should going. just pop out. There we go. Just look at that. See that? Yep. Ooh. Whoa. Yeah, I don't let that hit you again. <laughs> so that's what it was. This little old one, and this is the new one, and it looks the same. I got the Shasun line and that metal tab in there. Just wanted to be tight, so the new one goes right in there. Ah! Oh, it snaps in. That's good. Let's hand tighten the eight first. Down one more. Oh wait, no, that's no, that's too big. That's the big one. That's the big one. I think this is the small. This is the eight. <laughs> Here, that's the, the big one. Eight. Okay, it's four. I always like to go by hand, so I don't cross thread, and then switch to the away from the impact to the regular drill. So the small teeth are on the top and the big teeth are on the bottom. So I was bending it this way. I want to bend it down this way, down. Yeah. And that'll be, should be tighter. Oh, look at that. Dude, that thing is like, like it'll work if I bend it too much. Okay, not doing that then. Oh, oh yeah. I feel it. A lot more pressure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I just needed to yeah, push it the other way. That's much better. I feel like it's super tight. Okay. There you go. That's the sh Oh, torque wrench. I gotta get the torque wrench. I'll be right back. Okay. Wait, that wasn't it? That's this one, huh? Yeah. Oh, wait. You need to go to 65, right? 65. Come on a minute. Yeah, that's done. That's not very tight. Take this one down all the way to uh, 30. That seems like way loose. You know what I mean? That's anything. Probably good enough. It is what it is, right? It's just a little done. It's stuck on there, but those are the pits. There's like pits in the surface. So I'm gonna leave that in the pits. I'm not gonna try to dig it out in the pits. That's metal shavings from the transmission. Is that gook? That needs to be cleaned off. Look at all that metal shavings and grease building up. It's crazy, huh? You know what? This is not looking for sh Bad idea. What's that? Less than a quarter done after 15 minutes? Let's give up and go get gasket remover. Sounds like a good idea to me. So how long was that? That was probably an hour of elbow grease and the uh, crud cutter, which broke it up better than the Rubon and the sea foam. Watch out, this is going to break. You probably don't want too much dirt inside of there, huh? That's yeah. not a good idea. Don't, don't show that. <laughs> <laughs> It says to use on the Toyota FIPG seal, clean surfaces with a non-residue solvent. 
I don't know what it was. Non-residue salt disc. But I'm guessing it's something that doesn't leave that doesn't leave any oil on it. No streaks. That is perfect. Wait, I forgot. That's what I went. Yeah. And I'm just gonna apply it all the way around and then smear it. And I'll wipe down the outside and wipe down on the inside. And what that does is it distributes it down the lips. And once I smear it, it has to be put on in 5 to 15 minutes. Now it's lined up. Cool. <laughs> this is this is pretty neat. Actually I'm seeing some squeeze out, which is a good sign. We're going in a crisscross pattern. Working our way from the outside to the inside. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's more helpful than. Is that it? It was 65, right? You remember? I uh, do not. That's good. That feels like it actually set. And do you see this? This is like squeeze out. Look at that. Oh, it's it's already solid. Wow. That was yeah. It's pretty quick. I forgot if it goes on the inside or the outside. I guess I'll put it on the outside. I'll put it. I mean, that looks forward. like the lines up right. Oh, I hope so. There it goes. You see that? See how it sets on the top of the pipe here? So, this is on this side. Yeah, now I got it. <sighs> yeah, this is way more than a hundred and Oh, all right. That's the bracket. So it's a pan, the drain plug, and the bracket. It wasn't so bad, huh? So now I have a funnel in a funnel. Look at that. What did I say? Three? Four? Yeah. So, three and a half. These are cheap Harbor Freight funnels. It's like $2 for it's pouring out, it's pouring out. Watch the top. I see it, I see it. Oh, I mean, up here. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> oh. I bet it's because it drained out. I'm gonna let it run. Ah, uh, yeah, because it might pump through some systems. Yep. I think because I refilled the pan and so much dripped out of the body, that's why it's reading so high. It's reading really, really high. It should be way down here. So I'm going to run the engine and then we're going to check for leaks. It's been an hour and about 20 minutes. We're supposed to wait one to two hours before we start, start the engine. So hopefully it's enough and it's a 15 to 16 hour cure time. So 15 to 16 hours before I can actually drive it and put pressure on the transmission. So let's start her up and we'll check underneath too to see if there's any leaks. That's good enough. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's right. That's per lot, huh? Mm -hmm. Three quarts, that's perfect. <laughs>